I had a lot of interest in my test video on the DJI Neo here, so let's indeed start a new mini-series on, well, phones and drones. Now, there are hundreds of YouTube channels based on drones per se, you know, RT video of coastal castles or following a creator on a mountain bike or casually filming something a couple of miles away, usually with the aid of dedicated controllers or goggles and the significant cost and bulk involved up to a thousand pounds of hardware and it all packs away in a rucksack, that sort of thing. Which is great, but I'm more minimalist. Ditch the controller, ditch the rucksack, regain most of the £1,000 and see what can be done with a tiny drone weighing not much more than 130 grams and which can either control itself, as here, by AI or, at most, by the phone that you already own. The DJI Neo is quite new to the scene. It's inexpensive and nigh on indestructible. And I grabbed mine as new secondhand for about £120 all in. I couldn't resist, especially when I realised that the drone was all I needed. I wouldn't have to wrestle with controllers or VR goggles. Of course, there are a few significant limitations to the Neo is best thought of as a personal drone. It's designed to take photos and videos of you and what's immediately around you. And as I showed in my last video, the range is at most, when controlled from a phone, 50 metres, which isn't enough to shoot videos like those you see on TV, looking like they've come from a helicopter but it's enough to have enormous fun gathering memories of you and your family. After all, with just phone control, there's very little setup needed. In fact, with the Neo's built-in preset selfie modes here, there's literally no setup, which means that when out with family and pets, you can whip it out your pocket, press a couple of buttons, and the Neo launches and grabs video of you all having fun without unduly testing the patience of your nearest and dearest while you <coughs> set up that complicated drone shop. And after each pre-programmed shot, it just hovers in front of you to land on your hand. Good as gold. And then when flying under phone control, which is my main focus, you capture audio via the phone's microphone, saving you having to do a voiceover later from existing drone footage. So yes, it's a very different world to that of pro drone users. Amateur sounds about right, not least because even though this shoots 4K video, you're unlikely to be able to film anything professional with such relatively limited range. Now, ah, some might say, get a controller or goggles and the Neo will do more, true. But if you're getting extra gear, then you might as well go for a bigger, more expensive drone in the first place. I'm just gonna feature the Neo and at most the Neo with a smartphone. And that's hopefully what you're here for too. The Neo has four propellers encased in tough plastic guards to save it from damage if it hits anything, and also to save fingers if you hold it wrong, I guess. The props and guards do come off and can be replaced if the worst ever happens. A single axis gimbaled 12 megapixel camera is up front and can shoot 4K or 1080p video in landscape aspect ratio, or 1080p in portrait via a vertical crop. There are more basic cameras on the underside which track ground texture and help the Neo track speed and altitude. Now, concepts of the internals of the Neo will be familiar to any phone enthusiast following me. 22 gigabytes of storage, a 1435 mAh 7-volt lithium-ion replaceable battery, GPS, 2 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.1, an LED array to indicate battery state and general operation, and a custom chip and a DJI operating system that's updatable over the air. And it's this OS that does all the camera-based AI tracking in all the auto modes, detecting people and hand gestures and so on, plus working with the DJI Fly Controller app on the phone, of which more in a future video. The Neo is so solidly made. If accused of being a toy, then it's mainly because it's built to take abuse, likely collisions with trees, wires, and lampposts in my case. And my only minor complaints are that the camera Guard for the gimbal, when not in use, is fiddly to put on and fiddly to get off. <laughs> and the DJI doesn't tell you how to turn the drone on, of all the things left out of the manual. For the record, you press the power button once to bring up the battery state, and then long press to boot up the drone's OS. And the same to shut down afterwards. Phew. And there is, in my opinion, a bigger mission in flying this drone via phone control, but I will come to that.